Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful, sort of cool, almost fall day. Fall is upon us, I guess, Sunday morning, I was told, three times with weather and what. But the most exciting thing that's happened, if you happen to live in the wood of Cheeseman Park, which I do, or frankly, any place in them, the Secret Garden, I love the name, is finally no longer a secret. Joe Vostris is here to tell us about something that for three years, Joe, I've been waiting for the secret garden not to be a secret. Congratulations, and please, you have to tell us all about it. Well, good morning, Gabby. Thanks for having me on. And and uh, yes, it's been uh, it's been a long wait uh, to to get this project going, and we're super excited that it's opened, and that the neighborhood is, has embraced it so enthusiastically. I mean, very enthusiastically is uh, is how I'd put it, and uh, which has really made us have to up our game and make sure we're. Uh, ready for the volume that we've been doing um, and uh, and making sure that everybody's just really enjoying it and having a great time. But the I, the Secret Garden, I mean, has been a such a wonderful, rewarding project to work on. There's really nothing else quite like it in the city. Um, no, absolutely this, not. The story of how this came to be is pretty interesting. We... Um, they, there's a property. The property is called the Tears McFarland House. It's a mansion on the north side of Cheeseman Park uh, at William Street. Um, it was a the, it's a beautiful stately home uh, on a big piece of land. And um, there's the mansion itself. And then there's a building in the back, which it's easiest to think of as a carriage house. It's technically not what it was, but it's just like a carriage house. Um, the building was a family residence up until the 1970s, and at some point um, got converted into an office building, which is, or, you know, so many of the old mansions in Capitol Hill either got turned into apartment buildings or office buildings, because they were just too big and too expensive to maintain for your average family. This one got converted into an office building, and at some point got, the property was donated to the city of Denver who then turned around and immediately gave it to Capitol Hill United Neighbors. Um, and uh, Capitol Hill United Neighbors had it for a couple of decades. But the building that was very expensive to maintain, it was in poor condition, and that was really creating a financial burden on the organization. And they came to us, City Street Investors, my company, and said, um, can you help us with this building? And uh, so we said, sure, happy to take a look at it. And so we began a process that our company uses in real estate development called custom crafting, which is really little more than just sitting down with a community and asking, what do you want? What do you not want? And we did that. We did a series of focus groups um, about what this neighborhood really wanted. And uh, it was interesting that that food and beverage and, and having a place to go for coffee and, and meet a friend and maybe get a glass of wine and really have an amenity on the park where maybe there's a bathroom and a place you can get a bottle of water. Um, it's a very, very busy park. I don't think some people realize how busy Cheeseman Park is. Um, the pedestrian traffic is just unbelievable. And so this, this amenity was much needed. And so once we gathered that information, we uh, realized that in order to provide that kind of use, uh, and of course we were gonna do it in the carriage house, um, we would need to rezone the property. And so that process took, gosh, all 18 months. I mean, it, it took almost two years to rezone the property. Once the rezoning was done, we um, uh, then had to, uh, you know, design it and, and build it. And while all this was going on, we also had to renovate the mansion itself. So we kind of had two parallel projects going on. The, uh, you know, we ended up going into partnership with Capitol Hill United Neighbors and buying the property and, and doing all this stuff. But the one thing that happened that was kind of interesting is that the project became so expensive that 
there was literally no way to rent it uh, to generate enough income to actually pay for everything we were doing. So the only solution was for us to move in. <laughs> so we so we just absorbed the expense and moved in because no one else would pay the rent as high as would had to be to make this thing work. So we but we're delighted to be here. Um, we moved from our our office in Rhino um, and really and moved into this building and our our employees couldn't be happier. But in any event, we were able to give the neighborhood everything that they wanted. Um, you know, in terms of having a delightful place to hang out and. Oh, I get a cool. cup of coffee and um, I, I've had to increase the Wi-Fi twice because there's so many laptops going on down there that I have to have lots and lots of bandwidth for everybody. But um, we've just created this little um, oasis of pleasantness, you know, on the park full of flowers and a place oh, to sit. I do have a stupid question. What is the name of the purple flower in the vase? Oh, I I don't know what those crazy things are called. Well, you've got to get the name because I'll I, find out for you. I, I you're see. talking about the one that's kind of fuzzy, right? Yeah. The, the when you say secret garden, if anybody who is watching this hasn't been, the garden is gorgeous, full of beautiful flowers and canopies and seating, but those flowers are just gorgeous. Yes, uh, we wanted to make sure that our secret garden was in fact a garden. So we'll always have a really, you know, we're always going to put a lot of money and effort into making sure there's lots of pretty things to look at. Um, the, uh, you know, the mature trees around the site are part oh. of what make it charming. It keeps it shady. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a joy to work on and uh, just hope that the uh, neighborhood continues to embrace it and, and support it. And we're just going to do our best to try and make sure we're giving everybody what they want. Okay, start by them. You got this by the story is wonderful. The inside where you can eat inside as well as outside is just charming and really, really pretty and fun too. But describe what you are doing from seven in the morning to eight o'clock at night. Sure. So the in the morning, we open at seven. So the, the day we're open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. So from seven to 11 every day, we're really pretty much like a traditional coffee shop. You know, this is a place where you come, you're going to get your latte, you're going to get your espresso, you're going to get a muffin, um, a croissant, uh, whatever you like, you know, the typical stuff that you'd expect. We do, a, we make all of our own pastries at an offsite location um, and bring them over. Um, really nice stuff. And then at 11 o'clock, we uh, uh, open up our little kitchen and we have a menu that has some, you know, really nice salads. It has some great sandwiches. Oh, uh, it's, it's very much cafe food. Um, we do, you know, we have a smoked trout dip. We, of course, do a, a cheese and charcuterie board. Um, so the kind of things that, you know, are, you know, nice to have with a, oh, I forgot to mention, we have a liquor license, which is one thing that separates us from a traditional coffee shop. So, you know, if you can come in if you want, and we sell on the weekends, certainly we see this, that in the mornings between 7 and 11, there's plenty of mimosas and Bloody Marys uh, uh, being enjoyed. But, um, you know, we do have a lot of nice wines by the bottle and by the glass. So lovely place to come in and, you know, get a sandwich or a salad for lunch, maybe have a glass of wine or a beer. Uh, as we go into the evening hours, you can enjoy, you know, the, a charcuterie board. You can get one of our, uh, you can get mixed drinks. You know, we've got um, a bunch of specialty cocktails. Um, at Pat's insistence, we actually have some non-alcoholic cocktails that are very nice. <clears throat> we added those the first day she showed up <laughs> and they've been big and they've actually been big sellers uh, that people are into that and uh, yesterday afternoon when i was there i was having some of those my friend had a couple of the cocktails and you know our reaction is this is really good because you don't know what to expect from a little cafe. Sure, yeah. In the, the way. Yeah, we do have seating inside for about 65 people. So 
it's, yeah, it's a nice room. Um, and the room is flexible. Uh, it can be, uh, it can actually be used for events too. Should we want to do a, an event that that room could be used for that, but there are, um, there, there is 65 seats in there and, um, it's, you know, place where you can, again, meet a friend for a cocktail or during the day, there's lots of people in there working from home, so to speak. They've got their laptops and their headphones on. I'd like some of them to move after two hours. <laughs> right. Well, but I can't say that. Yeah, well, honestly, I can't say it either. Oh. Um, you know, one of the one of the commitments that you make in a neighborhood like this when you do what we call a third place, you know, the third place being where do you go when you're not at home and you're not at work. Well, is, and people who live and work at home want to get out and there they yeah. are. But, um, you know, one of the commitments that you make is that, you know, you're very accommodating. And, you have to be. Yes. Yeah. And so that goes from everything from pets to computers to, uh, you know, just letting people use this as their, um, as their third place. So, I have um, several new best friends, four-legged. <laughs> yes. But I do have to say, the people have brought dogs in, just obviously outside, that are very well behaved. Yeah, we... And I we have were, not seen dog fights, attack, or barking, or anything. No, our dogs so far have been uh, very, very well behaved. But, you know, that, it's... um. When, when we first opened, this is kind of a funny story. So we didn't announce the opening, right? We didn't, there was absolutely no press release done. There was nothing. We just quietly opened up the doors. Uh, on, and the next day, we had a line going all the way through the garden. And, and finally, um, one of my manager uh, has finally said to a few people in line, how on earth did you hear about this place? Where, where are all you people coming from? Well, it turns out that there is an influencer on, I, I don't know, TikTok or Instagram, whose whole shtick is telling people places that you can take your dogs. And oh. she has 30,000 followers. Oh, and so she, she posted, so she posted uh, a little video of Secret Garden. And when I went online to check it out, because somebody told me about it, the video had had 50,000 views. So oh. <laughs> we got, we got a little, we got a little overwhelmed, uh, but the dog lovers know we're here by, as a result, but, and we're, we're happy. Uh, but that was just a funny story about how, you know, people love their dogs and they want, they want places that they can go with their dogs. And well, we're certainly an ideal candidate for that. Well, my new boyfriend's name is Rufus. <laughs> okay. And he's a hound dog, who I never knew before I might have. <laughs> before we go any further, I you do have for people, get back if you're putting me on the spot. Sure, I'm the one who makes all the trouble. But you do have delicious quiche and burritos along with your pastries for breakfast. I'm the guy who wants food as opposed to pastries. Yes. And that you do have those available. Yeah, we do. And we'll actually expand that a little bit. It's, you know, we do not have a full kitchen, um, you know, so we won't be making eggs over easy or anything like that, but we are going to uh, try and continue to expand some of those offerings. I particularly like to have a few more uh, non-pastry food offerings on yeah. Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, in the morning. So we'll, our, our chefs are, are hard at work inventing some additional things for us to, um, uh, to carry. The burritos and the quiche have uh, actually been far, far more popular than we originally uh, anticipated. And, and uh, as Pat well knows, we are um, having to uh, make our productions uh, much bigger than <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. And you didn't mention, but it is, it's gourmet fast. You go up, you order, but if you are, you, you're given a number and people can sit down and whether it's with your dog, I'm with my friends, they do deliver your food beautifully. Yeah, and that's right. So it's, it's very nicely done. 
Yeah, it's counter service. So you order at the counter and we'll, we'll give you your drink right there, your coffee or your wine or whatever. Then you and a number and you go and sit down. And then as soon as your food's ready, someone brings it out to you and make sure you have you have everything you need. So it, uh, it's definitely kind of that quick casual um, kind of uh, uh, service, but um, we're trying to keep it as really as fun, but also just a little bit of a step up from your average, you know, kind of fast food or even your average coffee shop. I, I would not put it in that category at all. Yeah. Okay. Now, what happens when, when, I mean, I'm there, but what happens when winter comes? Well, so as, as Pat knows, but others may not, we operate three large beer gardens in and around the city, Lowry, Edgewater, and Green Valley Ranch. And so we're used to having this sort of seasonal business where, you know, you are going to be much busier during nice weather than you are during inclement weather or very cold weather. So we're lucky here that we have 65 indoor seats. Um, and so we expect the interior, obviously, will be much busier during cold weather. And in fact, this weekend, we're actually oh. expecting quite a bit of rain on Saturday and Sunday. So oh. we have had this ridiculous run of great weather for the last three weeks, yeah. but we're going to get some weather this weekend. But, um, you know, we'll, we are encouraged by how many people in Colorado love being outside. And, and really the only thing that keeps them from being outside is rain uh, and lack of sunshine. But you know, beautiful winter day, the sun's out, you know, people have their beanies on and their puffy jackets and they're sitting outside. And of course, we'll fill the garden with um, heaters. So oh, you know, that was I, my next question. Yeah, we'll have a bunch of heaters out there. So during the nice, nicest part of the day, you know, you'll be able to grab a table and and uh, we'll, we'll heat your head up good and hot with the heaters. But um, yeah, I mean, people, uh, it, I will tell you, you know, it's been a fascinating thing. I've been, as Pat knows, I've been in the business for a long time, 40 years. Um, the one thing the pandemic did for Denver um, that didn't, that didn't have, we didn't have before was that people eating outside during colder weather. Now we've all seen it at the ski areas. I mean, it's nothing to see, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people sitting outdoors at a ski area you know, having happy hour, even as it's snowing, but that didn't happen in, in the city so much. But it, but since the pandemic happened and people sort of got used to the idea of just right. hanging out outdoors, I'm shocked to see in our beer gardens, like double the business of people just sitting outside, you know, on, as long as it, as long as there's sunshine, even if it's 35 degrees, you know, they enjoy sitting outside and getting some fresh air. And, um, so only on, you know, on the coldest of cold days, you know, we, uh, could be pretty busy and packed on the inside, but as long as there's heat, people will come. Yeah, as long as it's sunny and we've got some heaters going, the, the garden will be open. And I've eaten inside as well, and it's delightful in there. It's charming. It's the place is just, I'd say adorable, but it's beyond adorable because it's just comfy, fun, marvelous ambiance. And the help that wanders around is lovely. You yeah. Know, they're really caring, nice, young people. Yes, I think our management staff did a great job of hiring for pleasantness as a, right. as, you a can learn. as a top priority. You know, we have a saying that uh, you can't put in what God didn't. And so we can, we can train people to be baristas. We can train people to be bartenders, but it's hard to train people to be sincere, authentic, um, nice hospitality driven. It, that's either your personality or it's not. So we I don't know right. whether you know or not, but Danny Meyer of Shake Shack in New York, Bay, that's been his line hiring people. I've known you for 40 years and I've known him for 40 years. And you both <laughs> say the same thing. Yeah, so that's where we start. But a, a lovely staff of really, really nice people. And, you know, it's it's been interesting. I've had a, a few people from our other restaurants around the city come in to help out. Uh -huh. And uh, all of them say, is there any chance of transferring over here? <laughs> and I asked, well, why do we want to transfer here? 
And they all say the people are so lovely. They're um, really noticing that the people that are coming in the door are so happy and uh, just happy to see us here, happy to have the cafe open, happy to, happy to have this amenity on the park. And so they just come in in just a really good mood. And I, um, and you go out in a really good mood too. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So our our, uh, our neighbors are proving to be. Um, you know, uh, really happy, and they're making our employees happy. So well, that's it's nice, why we live in this nice, hood. Nice virtuous cycle. So. That's why we're here. Uh, okay, uh, I agree. Now, are you doing just before we start wrapping up catering from there as well? We won't be doing off-premise catering, but we definitely will. Uh, we're actually, it'll be up on our website by October 1st. We'll have sort of our uh, event packages and uh, uh, menus and that kind of thing will be posted around October 1st. Oh, and okay. so some of the, the, we didn't get a chance to talk about this, but the mansion itself, uh, we do, it is our company headquarters, but we're on, we're really officing on the second and third floors. We've maintained the first floor of this building. That's the richest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, just as a, as kind of a, I would describe it as a common area, but, you know, it's just a lovely lounge space with comfortable furniture, but it also has a lot of tables and chairs, and it was really set up to be able to handle events. So, for example, we've already done a few baby showers. We've done some wedding showers, uh, really using uh, the first floor of the house. Um, and then uh, there's a lovely front porch, you know, that that can also be added into an event or it could potentially be extended into the garden. Um, and I suppose we could do a buyout. I mean, if for a big enough event, um, somebody could take the entire first floor in the cafe for for some type of event. We're a little reluctant to do too many of those because the cafe is primarily yeah. her, here to service the neighborhood. Yeah. But right. uh, yeah, events will, I suspect we will do a fair number of uh, events. We can do cocktail parties, um, you know, uh, and, and really like any social gathering that isn't too big. Right. Um, we work probably work best with groups under 50. Right. Well, the whole thing is just incredible. And any of you watching, you'll see me around because I'm there, about 10,000 other people are there as well all the time because it's a real treat. Thanks, Joe, for doing that. But now give the web page, the hours, how somebody gets their location and all that. So the, uh, the uh, web page is secret garden bar and cafe.com secret bar secret garden bar and cafe.com uh we are located on the north side of cheeseman park at 13th and williams uh the um uh, easy access obviously off of 13th or 14th street either one um parking i'm going to be honest with you there is no parking so uh 99 percent of our guests uh, uh come in from the park um but uh which has which we talked about earlier has so much traffic but street parking is widely available in the neighborhood and um uh, so it's it's actually pretty easy to find a space you might have to walk a block uh but uh, if, you can, if you're walking into cheeseman park you're supposed to walk <laughs> that's right as you know cheeseman park really isn't open to traffic anymore so hey. um, but uh, in any event, uh, yeah, come and, and enjoy. We're we're easy to find. Uh, you'll see why it's called Secret Garden because if you look at us from the street, all you really see is the mansion, and then tucked away in the back next to the park is the is the Secret Garden. Obviously, uh, said, not so secret anymore. Uh, which is a good and thing. obviously, no reservations. However, uh, do you take phone calls and orders? I assume not. Uh, there, they, you, there is a, uh, of course we do take phone calls. Um, typically, I have, I typically, sorry, we'll typically, we'll, 
uh, during operating hours, it's likely that you'll leave a message and we'll get back to you with information. But our website's got really almost every, everything that you need to know, including the menu, all the drinks, uh, directions, all, all that kind of stuff. But uh, And then, like I said, look for our event page to go live around October 1st. Okay, well, and anybody watching this, please like and subscribe to the Gab, G-A-B-B, slash Gabby Gourmet on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. It's Gabby Gourmet. And you'll see me there. It, I mean, everybody in the hood that I know is going, gone, been, going back. And it's wonderful. That's, thank you for making something that we all can enjoy. And the whole city can now make it their hood, too. Well, thank you so much. For I mean, your... there, there's a huge range. of You can park on a side street and walk over as well. Yeah. And, and everyone should know that this was a complicated and difficult project to get done with the rezoning and the liquor licensing. And I think it was three years that I've been looking at it. And, uh, and I don't want to take this opportunity to thank you for your support during this. Me and everybody I know. <laughs> that being a neighbor, your support was really important to make this thing a reality. And the funniest, I'll just part with this, is that there was one neighbor, I won't mention the neighbor's name, but there was one neighbor who was just vehemently opposed to every single thing we were doing, to the rezoning, to the liquor licensing, everything. That neighbor has now been here three times. And every time I see this person, um, I'm told, this is fantastic. I didn't really understand what it was going to be. And I'm so glad that it happened in spite of my best efforts. <laughs> so, oh. Well, so, I turn it around. when we hang up, I may have to call you to find out if it's the person I'm thinking of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I do know, well, there's something against everything. But Good for the person for at least admitting yeah. that they like it now. Yeah, it, fear of the unknown can be an issue, but um, <laughs> the minute that you come in and you see it, it's easy to understand. You know? One more. It's open every day of the week. Seven days a week. Okay, and I assume you'll be closed Christmas, New Year's, and those days. Yes, only those big major holidays. Otherwise, we're open. I mean, that's the other thing about being in the neighborhood is that you need to be open because people depend on you. No, yeah, we we don't. We depend on getting our coffee there. That's right. And uh, so and, it's, sad, it's sad when it's really sad if it's closed. And we didn't have. We're out of time, but I just wanted you to know the sandwiches are great, and they give you a little salad, potato chips with it. And my friends and I are totally addicted to the paninis, but the other sandwiches I've had are marvelous. Great salads, everything fresh, good. And thank you for giving us a place to go. And would you please say goodbye so I could go get a cup of coffee? <laughs> goodbye. And see you see in the garden. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Much bye.